I want to understand from you, you have people coming to this from every walk of life. You know, somebody who's an artist, not an artist, student, young, old, everyone. What's your wish? How do you want people to experience this uh, Biennale? Uh, well, to begin with, uh, you know, uh, the entrance to the Aspen Wall, you know, was at that front gate, uh, as you know it, in the last two editions. So one of the things that we did was to change it to the original entrance, which is at this corner right now. Uh, as you enter, uh, you have four, uh, a choice of four uh, ways to go and, you know, uh, or travel through the exhibition. So one of the things was to kind of, you know, include the idea of multiplicity and uh, can we bring in, you know, multiple ways of looking at the world, multiple ways of making or disseminating in a way that it comes together as one flow uh, that could be seen as the Binale in this case. You know, if I think of the theme itself, uh, you know, it's a very poetic theme. Uh, so tell me your own version of it. Where did it come from? I mean, I know the story, etc. Is it a story you read when you were a kid? Is it always been at the back of your head? Or was it a shower moment, you know? How, tell me about the theme and where did it come from for you? Uh, the idea of poetry, inclu inclusion of poetry in the Binali and literature. Uh, yes. In fact, uh, you know, when I started and when, when I was asked to be the curator of the Binali, the first uh, impulse was to come up with a curatorial statement that came from my own practice as an artist. Uh, but only quickly to realize that, you know, it had to be outside of those limitations. And this was also an opportunity to kind of, you know, uh, go out there and, you know, look for things and and also the question came up, you know, how do we look at the Binali, you know, can I sidestep this uh, image of a curator who is a creator of knowledge and culture to someone who is a host that also, you know, part of the audience, can we see this uh, unfold uh, through the Binali and can we see this Binali as something that uh, is, is in its own making uh, uh, and and also the title came much later, you know, like very recently for practical reasons, we had to find a title and, you know, <laughs> that, uh, that, I mean, I, I think, you know, it would have been great to, you know, kind of keep changing the title over the period of time and, you know. Uh, you mean over the three months, you mean? Yes. <laughs> I mean, you change it every Biennale, you're saying that's we not enough, it'd be yeah. nice to change it through the Biennale? Yeah, so every E-Flux announcement, we had to, you know, come up with the curatorial beef, so I, I kept changing the brief over the period of time. This is what it is at now. And uh, maybe perhaps, you know, if there was an opportunity, I'll write another text that uh, sums up some of the things a little later. And like I said in the beginning that, you know, uh, this is the beginning uh, on 12th, on 12, 12, 16, and there are many more beginnings to come that will spill over or no, that's through, uh, through the time of the Binale and maybe kind of even after. <laughs> so, you know, you were supposed, you started with potentially 75 artists and you ended up with 131 artists or mm. something. So what about it was unstoppable for you? What is it that you wanted to show here that you felt I need to add one more layer, I need to add one more layer? So is it that you see somebody and say, I want you here or what was it? Yeah, I have to start from the beginning, like, you know, when we decided to be outside uh, of my own practice and, you know, where do we look and, you know, I started uh, these conversations with people who are seemingly outside of, so to say, the expectation of a Biennale space and uh, it started with, you know, having a lot of conversations with, you know, especially people in the traditional arts and how do they look at, you know, what, did, what does it mean to be contemporary? What does it mean to be together in time? Is something we were looking at. And then, <clears throat> and that it emerged that, you know, we could, you know, like uh, invite poets and writers. And one of the first people that I was met was a close friend and a collaborator and a poet traveler and an inspiration in many ways was Sharmishta Mohanty. And, uh, and she's been like very, very instrumental in, you know, like kind of pointing at pointing me at various directions that I wouldn't have otherwise imagined. Uh, so first artist we invited was Raul Zurita, 
I mean, that was not such a difficult decision because he's already has one foot in, you know, kind of visual art world, so to say, because in the early, uh, in the mid 80s, he made this work, uh, <clears throat> writing eight kilometer lines on the sky with the help of jets. Uh, and now, right now, he is working on projecting his words on Chilean cliff. So when we invited him, uh, in, instead of me coming up with a curatorial statement, we had him read his poetry. I mean, that was the perfect beginning to that. So, so then on it kind of uh, uh, was like chain of events and very, very organic that, you know, things started emerging everywhere and, uh, and having moved out of my practice, uh, so to say, you know, in terms of being a curator, I think, you know, it's come a full circle, so to say, to, you know, kind of, I see a lot of resonances of how I started, but uh, looking at, at it now, it's, it's, uh, it's looking at it from a very, very different perspective. Yeah. So, it, actually, my next one is a follow-on to that. Um, as an artist and a curator, do you need to be different people? Because as an artist, you have a certain point of view of, this is what I like to make, this is my statement, but as a curator, you may be working with people who may not agree with your point of view. So how do you separate yourself from being an artist or curator? I think I spent a lot of time right in the beginning to, you know, figure out what curating means really, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, even kind of reading up books on curating. And, you know, I remember re reading uh, Ways of Curating by Hans Ulrich Obrist, only to be very confused at the end. And, uh, <laughs> and I thought that, you know, it would be best to kind of, you know, start with what are my affinities and uh, in my own work I've been looking at you know including all those spaces or bringing in all those spaces uh, into a space that is meant for contemporary art and where does this this space come from you know and I see that there is an essential difference between uh, what happens inside of a museum or a gallery space in India and what happens outside so there is a kind of case to be made in terms of where we come from and how uh, we are taught to make art. Yeah. So, you know, this is a huge show, right? You have multiple artists. You know, an artist has many ways of showing their work. They can do a solo show, they can do a small group show, but what is it about being part of such a huge thing that you think would uh, make a difference to the the tapestry of the artist itself, artist himself or herself. How do you think it will change them? I think when you think of a Binale and especially Kochi Binale, you know, I've been a part of uh, this Binale as a, an artist in the first edition and second. I think it's much larger than any one of us, uh, that it must be uh, in a way that, you know, you cannot fathom it all. In, on an individual basis and it's also about conversations that what you catch from other people. So I think, you know, this idea of multi multiplicity uh, or multiple, you know, in a, in a, in a, an effort to, you know, construct multiple narratives is also about that, that, you know, you may miss some things uh, that may be revealed through another conversation that's somewhere, that you don't see all these works as uh, postulations in a certain narrative, a singular narrative, but but uh, also between, you know, what happens in all of those conversations between the works, between the audience and the works, that becomes a part of uh, a larger, uh, larger experience of the Binali. So, in the last two years that you, you know, actually I met you two years ago when you just, the day you signed up as a, um, we announced as a curator. In the last two years, you've been very engrossed in curating this show. Uh, have you been able to do your own work? And once this is over, what do you think, uh, do you think your own work is going to change in some way? I've done a lot of work. Uh, I've done two shows, in fact, you know, during the process of my curating. I mean, I think this became a reason for me to be more active for somehow, you know, I kind of uh, was thinking about so many things that I could do and, you know, there are so many things and um, in that sense, it's been absolutely enriching. And what was your se second question? The, you know, this experience, is it going to change your future work? Are there some new things you're thinking of in the future that this work affected in any way? Absolutely, absolutely, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. He's not yeah. going to tell me now. <laughs> so thank you so much, Sudarshan, for your time. And, we'll, uh, um, and so we worked with the Sudarshan and his team, and we picked four artists. So 
we are going to continue the conversation with each of the artists to see what was behind their work. So thank you very thank much you, for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs>